welcome back to the channel, guys. The real Sharif M here, aka Mangana Steel, here to talk about another knife in my collection, do a bit of a design review, and let you guys know my thoughts. Today, we have a very, very interesting knife that I feel uh, some people have definitely taken a look at, others may have overlooked, but is truly, truly fascinating. Uh, I am absolutely in love with this little guy. To give you guys a quick size comparison, here it is against my Kubi Ruckus. It's definitely almost like, um, I don't know, I want to say almost feels like three quarters of an inch to an inch smaller. Uh, let's see, next to the Grazioso. Let's see here. About the same, you know, about like uh, an inch or so smaller. I think everybody kind of does this when they do the knife reviews. They try to get them lined up on the back edge here. So you can kind of see like this knife is a bit of a smaller knife than even the knives that I tend to design. Um, and it's funny, you would think, because I talk about it all the time, how I have you know, large or extra large to two XL hands, but why would I pick a knife that's small? Well, it's generally because you don't need a huge knife for everyday tasks. And I think this one is really exemplary. You guys may recognize it already it has the Chase ES by Quiet Carry. And this is a truly fascinating knife that's done with a very holistic theory behind its construction uh, that I really appreciate. I, I have been on the fence about picking up their uh, bigger, like more serious knife called the Drift, uh, mainly because I'm worried about whether or not it would fit my hand, uh, but Quiet Carry is such a great brand in the sense that they actually have, like I said, like an incredibly holistic theory about how they approach their knives and their knife designs. So what's the story with this knife? Well, the Chase ES is one of the few knives in existence that can actually say that it's almost completely saltwater proof, which... I find absolutely fascinating. The blade steel is done in LC200N, which I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it says it right there, which is a very interesting steel. It is not a steel that has amazing edge retention, but its corrosion resistance is well documented. I mean, this stuff does not corrode even under the most like extreme circumstances. And on top of that, they coated it, <laughs> you know? So this thing is like as good as you can imagine it going to be. In addition to the LC200N, all of like the hardware is titanium, which should not rust. The liner is also done in LC200N. This is a liner lock, as you can see here. And it uses the same steel as the blade steel, which is nuts, like nobody does that, right? Oh, sorry, the hardware, with the exception of the uh, pivot, is marine grade stainless steel. So these back here are marine grade stainless steel, right? So we have LC200N, we have titanium, we have uh, marine grade stainless steel here, right? Just like well thought out throughout, no bearings, just phosphor bronze washers. I mean, this thing is really meant to be a saltwater monster. And I think that that's really, really interesting. On top of that, this is made to be like completely ambidextrous. So really, if you just, um, I, I don't know about this, the pocket clip, if that would really work flipping it over, but it is a very interesting design. 
let's say you remove that, the opening method is completely ambi, you know? Uh, I am really bad at opening things with my left hand, but boom, there you go. And it's just a small, perfectly judged EDC knife for kind of like harsh saltwater environments. If you're like me and you live near a coast, this is actually a very compelling knife. It's nice and thin, almost like a bug out, and it can survive environments that you can't even take a bug out in all reality. The blade steel is also very thin and slicey, as you can see here. It has this beautiful drop point shape, nice thumb hole opening, and even though this sort of like toothy, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, jimping, seems like it would be aggressive and painful, it's not at all. Actually, my thumb does not slip on that under any occasion. The scales are done with G10. Now, one of the things that's also very interesting about this knife is the handle construction. Not the handle construction, rather, sorry. The handle design. It actually is a bit longer than the blade. If you actually watch this, right, look where the blade tip terminates. It's right here. So this whole section right here is actually a bit extra. I think that in part is to do with the pocket clip, but also it gives you really good ergonomics by allowing this back edge to tuck into your hand right here. So even though this is a small knife, I actually get four fingers on it very comfortably. And that little uh, extension, you know, if you want to call it that, allows the knife to really become useful as like a four finger, like just I, I can hammer grip this and push cut with it which for a knife this small really is not typical, uh, honestly. Like, let's see if I can show you a knife that's similar size. Uh, here is my Emerson Mini A100. And the Emerson Mini A100 is almost exactly the same size. Now this is like a hard use little EDC knife, but definitely when it comes to this point in the grip, I'm not feeling the presence like I am here, you know? So I don't feel as if I have as strong as a grip for doing the same kind of tasks, you know? Uh, what's another smaller knife that I have sitting around? Oh, here. Boom. Boom. Again, about the, si the same size as a Mini OG. And if you look at it, like very, very similar. There we go, get all, the here we go. Here's a trio of, of smaller knives. They're almost exactly the same size, each one of them. But this little bit extra here really makes this a very compelling option for push cutting and doing a little bit more work than I really initially thought, you know? So I don't know, man, like, what can I say about this? Like, obviously the Emerson, you know, is designed for kind of like harder use. This is kind of designed for, you know, like gentlemen's carry, everyday sort of purposes but not like particularly like hard use. But this guy really feels like, I don't know, like a bug out for all situations that kind of does what the bug out is trying to do, but better. I, I don't know how to explain it, but that, that's just the feeling that I get. You know, the finger choil here is perfectly judged you have enough extra here in this flat portion, actually. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's some jimping in there as well. So if you do want to choke up and get even a little bit more sort of reinforcement here 
from you the the end of your poem you really can and you can really feel like ah uh, like this is this is a solid performer and so to me like I don't know, man, when I go to the beach or anything like that, like, this is the knife that I want to take with me every single time. It's thin, it's lightweight, it has a steel and complete construction that just will not corrode, will not be affected by the elements. It's very easy to de deploy, you know, with this th uh, thumb opening here. Uh, they have done a thumb stud version, which... I'm not gonna lie, I'm really tempted by. It would be nice to be able to just like thumb flick this guy out rather than slow roll it. Um, or to have the option of doing either a slow roll or a thumb flick. Uh, but I'm I'm so in love with this thing that I I understand why people pick up the the drift. And they also are very sort of vocal about their appreciation and their love for that knife because something like that's as well thought out as this, but in Vanex, is crazy to me. I mean, really, this is why Quiet Carry has gotten the reputation that they do. And I know a lot of people want to pick on them because they refuse to uh, identify who their OEM is, but... In my opinion, fuck off, guys. Like, I hate to be crass about it, but, like, they're putting in work. They're doing really good work. And I don't think enough of the reviewers have really been vocal about how sort of well thought out the entirety of their designs are in comparison to a lot of other knives. There's not a single hot spot on this. With the finger choil, you don't ever feel like you need a finger guard. This thing really just feels like it can be used for any sort of circumstance, any sort of situation that you would use an EDC, like a smaller EDC knife like this. And honestly, this, when I, again, when I'm going out into like the beach or I'm going even like camping, this will be and is my EDC knife of choice over, say, something like a bug out. You know, it's just so well judged, so well thought out. And I think a lot of people have been sleeping on this just because like, oh, you know, the reviewers aren't talking about it. Or, you know, people are like, oh, well, they won't talk, tell us who their OEM is. Like, enough of that shit. Is it a good product? Is it well designed? Yes, exceptionally so. I would say, well, way better designed than a lot of Spydercos. Well, way better designed than a lot of Benchmades. And really has the right ethos, right philosophy, right ergonomics, right sort of everything to be in your EDC rotation by far. Um, I feel very strongly about this knife. It's one of my my prized sort of possessions in my knife collection um, as a user. And uh, it will continue to be, honestly. I may just pick up the thumb set version and not even reduce to one of them. I may keep both because I think that they're really like that compelling of an EDC knife. Um and they're definitely worth the time for you guys to check it out. Uh, I don't know of any other knife that is as well designed as this that features LC200N. And I'm going to see here if I can borrow a drift from one of my friends in the knife community. Because if, if that thing is even as remotely comfortable and useful as this guy is that guy has got to be in my collection as well. So props to Quiet Carry, man. They're really putting in work. They're doing good stuff. And if you guys have ever been on the fence about picking up one of these, uh, and particularly this guy, man, for the price, like 170 LC200N, liners and blade steel, marine grade stainless steel for the hardware, titanium pivot, like, come on, like, I don't think that there's much out there right now 
that is making as compelling of an argument as this guy is. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, this is truly, truly, uh, in my opinion, one of the excellent EDC knives out there. The Quiet Carry uh, Chase ES. All right. All right, guys. Love you. Take care. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe or I'm coming after you. Peace.